Is it? Now, my next guest is a numbers guy. What better time to have on America's Accountant than a day where we get a whole slew of numbers? Please welcome to the show Dan Geltrude, coming to us from Nutley, New Jersey. Dan, thanks for being on the show. Uh, all right. I mean, it's a shoulder shrugger for me. I, yeah, I can see some good things in it, some bad things in it. I don't feel any, I don't, de I don't feel decidedly different today than I did this time yesterday. How about you? Uh, nor should you, nor should I. Look, where the job growth occurs actually matters here, Scott. So if you just want to forget the, that there may be revisions down and we say, well, the expectation was 175. We came in at 216. It's a good number. Let's celebrate. Well, well hold on a second. Let's really look at where these numbers are coming from or, or what's making them up. To start with, you have 24% of the job growth coming from government. So to me, throw that part out. Then you have healthcare related services. That's another 18%. A lot of that relies on the government. So throw that out. So right off the bat, we're talking about over 40% of this number. It, to me, it doesn't matter at all. It, it, it's not really jobs growth. Then on top of that, we look at transportation and warehousing jobs down 23,000, a loss of jobs. So when you look at that, now you tell me what's so good about this number. Not much. They, they keep trying to tell me to be excited. They keep the nurse. It just depends, I guess, what side of the aisle you're on. But there's pundits out there saying we need to celebrate these things. And again, like I said, you're going to read the newspapers tomorrow about 216 created when we expected 175. So there's going to be a little bit of a hullabaloo about, about, about that. And then also a 40 year low in unemployment from 3.8 to 3.7. I mean, there's going to be a hullabaloo about that as well. But I don't, I'm like you. It's just really kind of cold oatmeal, right? I mean, it's not really doing it for me. And I, I sit here and say that, hey, when Hasbro, which sells toys, can't sell toys over Christmas, you know, this come last Christmas, that's alarming to me. And then you throw in what you just said about 40% of that jobs number was really non-productive jobs, government and health care. That's bad, too. I mean, I want to use the word they're a reckoning, but I wouldn't spell it the way they spell it. It would be W-R-E-C-K, reckoning, <laughs> because it seems like we have to have some sort of reckoning with these numbers. What do you think about that, Dan? Uh, we do. And on top of that, even if you want to go down the path to say, hey, there is economic growth and there are some sectors doing well. And, and yes, that's fine. But if you really look at where the economy is growing, and even whether it's retail or the holiday spending and all that other stuff, how about this? It's debt that's funding that spending. So again, when you talk about a day of reckoning with a, with a, a W in there, right? <laughs> <laughs> when you talk about all this debt, Scott, what that day of reckoning, well, I want to say I hope I'm not around for that one because it's going to be a mess. So now if we move over to, hey, what is the, how does the Fed react to this, right? So, you know, the Fed had been signaling that they're looking at rate cuts sometime in the perhaps near future. To me, that's all wrong, and I'll tell you why. You And you've talked about this. You have to look at where inflation was cumulatively right from the pandemic through now. So even, even if inflation is leveling off, Scott, we're not actually taking inflation down. We're learning to live with things being a lot more expensive and not having the income to make up that difference. That's really where we're at. Yeah, you're right. And, and a lot of people are slowly but surely, the longer we sit here, the, the, the more that becomes acceptable. And if you look at a, a chart of inflation over the last 50 or even 80 years, because it's always a positive, generally speaking, uh, we, our CPI is a positive number. And it, it always is going from the lower left of that chart to the upper right. I mean, it just is right. And, and, the, and the funny part, it is that at the top of that chart, they always say we're about to get inflation under control. Right. Well, so far, nobody's done that. Right. And that's the issue here is you're right, that compounding of inflation. And what does that put in the Fed's mind about interest rate cuts? Number one. Number two is last time, like I've been doing it a long time, 37 years. The Fed usually kind of shuts it down six months before an election, too. And the way that they're talking about rate cuts are almost talking about one a meeting next year or this year. So where does that put this rate cut talk? I mean, I, I never was on board in the first place, but it seems to me that there's got to be at least a dent in it. 
Scott, you, you bring up an interesting point, right? So if they're going to start playing around with the rates, presumably starting to bring rates down right before an election, who benefits from that? Well, the incumbent is going to benefit from that because that should be stimulating the economy when that's not the place we want to go. Right. Because by doing that, it's going to create more inflation. So I'll just give you a hypothetical. The Fed starts uh, reducing interest rates and, and, and it doesn't work as far as for the benefit of the incumbent. Now you have a new president coming in with guess what? more inflation. There you go. That's exactly what could happen. That's the problem because we're at still 3.1%. We haven't got it licked by any means. And that last mile always ends up trying to be, is usually the hardest one, right? So anyway, thank you very much. Happy New Year, Dan. We didn't get to see you on Monday. Dan Geltrude coming to us from Nutley, New Jersey. He's America's accountant. And he got us through all those numbers. All right.